I'm now going to have a look at authorizing a different way and this will be more permissions based so where we've looked at roles i.e what role does a user have now we're going to look at what permissions what is that user allowed to do and so the way we're going to do this is we're going to use the old classic we're going to look at our product here and we're actually going to give this a concept of ownership so we're going to be able to link a user to a product as the owner and then we'll have a permissions rule in there which only allows you to update the product if you are the owner of that product, i.e. if you were the user which initially created it. So how will we approach this? The first thing we need to do is we need to actually go and create that relationship. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. And there's an easy way that we can do this and we'll use the maker bundle like we've done to create entities in the past. So if I say PHP bin console, and I'm gonna say make entity, because if I want to update an existing entity, still go about it the same way. So I'll say make entity, and then when it asks you for the entity's name, which it will do here, I'm gonna say product, and then that way, what we do is we actually update an existing entity instead of creating a new one. So it's now asking me the new property name. And that will be owner. Field type will be a relation. What class should this entity be related to? That will be a user. And then it asks you the relation type. So we need to think of this from the uh, viewpoint of the product. And there will be many products to one user. So uh, one user will have many products, but a product will only ever belong to one user. So hopefully that makes sense, in which case we are looking at a many to one. Is the product owner property allowed to be null? I'm going to say yes because we already have some products in the database so I don't want things to explode on us. Let's just keep this simple and keep the wheels moving. So I'll hit enter there. Do you want to add a new property to user so that you can access update product objects from it e.g. user get products? That would be handy. Uh, a handy thing to have so if you wanted to get all the products for a particular user however for these recordings we're not actually going to use it so uh, I'm not going to demonstrate it and why add code which we're not going to use I'm just going to say no add another property no we don't need to do that that's all we needed to do so I'm just going to hit enter and that will take us out of there just getting a message there regarding um, some deprecations if you get those just ignore those they're not really important to us as you can see we've now been created a new uh, property on our products uh, on our product entity and it is a many to one and the target entity is user so what we want to do now is actually create a migration for this php bin console and the command you are looking for is doctrine migrations and it will be diff and so this will look at um, the database look at, at this entity here see what the differences are between the two and reconcile those in the form of a migration file so are you sure you wish to continue yes I am okay so we've now got a new migration file which is this one here let's just go and have a quick glance at it and make sure that we are happy with it alter table product add owner id into default alter table product add constraint fk blah 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 foreign key owner id references user id so our own we should have an owner id field on this uh, products table which references the id field on the users table let's go and actually migrate this so php bin console doctrine migrations Migrate. It'll ask you if you are sure. Yes, we are sure. Before we go any further, what I'd like to do is just add our uh, product read and product write groups to this. So, in fact, I'll just copy this bit and I'll paste that there. And then we'll just get rid of that assert not null because we've said that this can be null. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to set this. 
uh, owner ID here on product ID 6 to number 1, save that and then we need to add a rule to our product which says that I, I cannot update a particular product unless it is a uh, owner of that product. Here uh, we'll add an item operation or we'll add a couple of item operations and so that will be uh, get which we should just leave as plain old get like so and then the next one's going to be a little bit more complex so this will be put and then again like we did when we said uh, is granted role admin we need security and so we'll do the same thing again here so we'll be a little bit more lax with this we'll just say role user and if you remember what we said about that every user in the system has the uh, role of role user so really just making sure that there is an authenticated user making this uh, request and then this is where things get interesting we need to check that the owner of the product that we're updating is the actual authenticated user the way we do it is like this we have access to a special uh, token thing here called object and so that refers to the actual object that you're performing the operations on which in our case will be product item number six and then it will be get owner equals and then again we have access to something else another special uh, item and that is user and this time that means the authenticated user so let's go over to postman and we'll actually try this out so here we're making a put request and this is going to api products 6 so we'll just perform the operation on a single item uh, our headers so our token is set to our user number one which is the user which is down as the owner of this product and for the body we're just going to say a new description let's fire this off okay and it's come back with a status of okay and it's saying that the description is a new description let's go over to the database give this a refresh and as you can see there the description has changed to a new description okay perfect so what we really need to do is actually uh, change the owner to number two make sure that we have an api token for user 2 so we'll say 1 id number 2 user id will be user number 2 and so we'll just put in some gibberish there as the api token so this time we're still going to be making the request as user number 1 except we've said that the product is owned by user number 2 so hopefully we should see an authorization fail here uh, again let's just We'll change this to another new description. I'll hit send. Okay, that's good. Uh, 403 forbidden access denied. Now there is a way where you can actually uh, make the uh, message a little bit more uh, explicit and explain a little bit more about what's going on. And the way you do that is uh, after where you're performing the security check, you can then add a key called security message and so we'll say a product a product can only be updated by the owner let's go and fire this off again and so this time we get a little bit more information in the description a product can only be updated by the owner and so that takes care of that. Let's have a little recap on what we did there. We created the concept of an owner and uh, we added an owner property to our product entity. We related that to a user class. So now we could say that a particular user is the owner of the product, i.e. they created it. And using that, we were then able to specify some uh, permissions. And we said that you could only update the product if you were the owner of it and all very simple all we needed to do was just add an item operation here uh, do a similar kind of thing as what we did when we did roles so here we're just checking if um, 
the it is an authorized user by saying is granted role user and then and we said is the owner of the object the same as the authenticated user all fairly straightforward and nice and easy to implement if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like youtube to show you more of my content all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon each week i release a number of new recordings if you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content discounts and early access to my new videos you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video